So here we are back with the uh, PC9821 AS2, and this time we'll have the goal of upgrading the CPU. And I'm going to be installing this 486DX2 uh, 66MHz CPU in here. And in order to demonstrate um, how scripted this is and how I know everything that's going to happen, nothing is screwed in. <clears throat> For the sake of making a video nice and somewhat coherent and concise, so, we're going to slap the CPU in here. This appears to be a regular socket 3, although I'm not entirely sure what this icon here is for, but uh, we'll worry about that later. In fact, I'm not going to worry about that at all, because I still don't know what that means. I guess I'll uh, just take this here and uh, slap the CPU in the direction of the key here, like you're supposed to, with 486 boards, and not fry it like my old 486. That's a very uh, hard to push down socket lever here. Stick this in here. Turn the volume up so you can hear it post or do the peepo or whatever you want to call it and turn it on. Nothing happens. Uh oh. What could this possibly mean? So here's the deal with the AS2 and uh, this would go with any of the uh, Western computers or ATs, PC compatibles that uh, also have integrated CPUs. Um, the AS2 has a 486SX that is soldered onto the back here, and uh, this is one of those QFP whatever. It's a quad flat pa plastic package or some shit uh, CPU. And um, basically, when you stick a regular CPU into here, the two CPUs will have a fight much like siblings fighting over a game controller and uh, similarly the mom will come in and take the controller away so no one can talk. Basically the uh, CPUs will get into a uh, argument over the bus over who gets to control things and ultimately nothing will happen. So what you need to do is get a specific CPU and uh, I have one of those right here. This is a Intel Overdrive um, an ODP 486DX-33. Uh, now, if you look at the uh, the numbers on here, you would be let or you would uh, be led to believe that this is a 33 megahertz uh, CPU, just a 486DX 33. However, Intel is silly, and uh, they seem to have agreed with my conclusion that they are silly by uh, their later CPUs. This is actually a DX266 megahertz. But it only says 486DX-33 because that's the CPU you're supposed to upgrade from with this CPU. The later uh, Overdrive DX2s are uh, labeled, I think, uh, DX2 ODP uh, 66. So it's a bit more clear what the heck they do. So if we look at the back side here, let me get them at the same orientation. You may notice something slightly different. This uh, Overdrive processor here has one extra pin. However, uh, don't let that fool you, that pin actually does absolutely, absolutely nothing. It doesn't do anything, it's only a key, it's uh, not internally connected. And um, I'm guessing the reason why they did that on these overdrive uh, CPUs specifically is because uh, Intel might have thought that um, maybe the users would be getting into their computers and it'd be more helpful to have an actual physical key to uh, help guide the installation of the processor, unlike what I did with my old uh, 486SX on my 486 machine where I put it in completely back backwards and uh, toasted the CPU. So what makes this work, and not that one, is that there's actually a pin on here that's designed to uh, pull another pin on the socket low. It's called the, uh, it's like a hashtag up pin, which is, uh, to signify that there is an upgrade uh, present, and um, yeah, this CPU right here will do that for you. However, not all uh, CPUs that have the 169 pins instead of the 168 pins will do this, as uh, demonstrated by this other uh, this other upgrade chip here. This is a AM5X86133 or something like that. As you can see, it also has 169 pins, as it has this key pin here. However, it does not pull that line low and will not allow this machine to boot with this in here. Um, 
However, I wouldn't want to use this chip in here anyway because you'd pro it'd probably be a waste due to its uh, the AS2 is slightly slower memory than you know regular FPM or whatever the heck it is. And also, I don't know, it's just this thing runs really hot and there's no fan in the front of this case, so there's no way to really cool this even though it has a built-in heatsink. So there is one thing I did forget to say in my rambling there, and there are two kinds of overdrive processors by Intel. You got the ODP models and you got the ODPR models. So with the 66 megahertz models, you have the DX2 ODP 66 and you have the DX2 ODPR 66. And the, what the R sig or signifies is uh, it's a replacement processor. It's for removing the existing CPU that is socketed and putting it into a regular socket 3 computer or motherboard. While the ODP non-R models are for uh, upgrading a soldered-on CPU or a built-in CPU. However, you can use an ODP CPU in, an, in a uh, regular socket, but you cannot use an ODP-R in a upgrade socket. So, we're going to slap this in here and see what it does. Um, get it in there nice. Hard to push down. It looks pretty nice. I like the uh, integrated heatsink. It's uh, nicely installed. It makes the uh, whole thing kind of feel nice in a way. Oh, all right. Now we're all the way in. We'll start it up. And what do you know? It boots. So, in order to get the uh, PC9821 to display its uh, boot or post screen with all the extra information. Uh, I didn't really describe it before, but you just hold down the control caps, uh, this key, and graph all at the same time while powering it on. And you should get all the nice details that you would want from a post screen, or at least most of them. It might beep at you, you just release it and then uh, it should show up. But my monitor is not warmed up. Yeah, I, you missed it. Okay, let me just do this again. So it is running a 66 megahertz DX2, or at least it reports that, and um, it will uh, behave like it's got a 66 megahertz DX2 installed. So I'm gonna do, <clears throat> I'm gonna run the uh, built-in benchmark and uh, do a couple tests in some games to show the difference in performance. Although most of the games I have on here, at least I think, I don't think most of them will show much of a difference uh, performance-wise, as some of them are made for slower computers. However, I think I'm also going to test, um, since uh, this BIOS also supports three different CPU modes, I'm wondering if there will be a difference in the actual uh, speed of the CPU in, say, like mi middle mode. The middle mode is supposed to emulate a 66 or 16 megahertz 486 with the uh, with the built-in CPU it also reports as a 16 megahertz 486 when you stick in middle with the upgrade processor however I'm wondering if there will be a difference in uh, practically using it for like video games and also the same with the low except that emulates a NEC V30 I think at 10 megahertz so uh, we'll uh, well I didn't want to leave it at low right now but I guess we'll do a little bit of, or a couple tests while I'm not exactly sure what this benchmark does, it did complete a lot faster on the 66 MHz CPU as expected, and also it takes advantage of the FPU. Well, anyway, the 66 MHz CPU gets it done in 0.93 seconds, it looks like, and uh, 1.61 seconds on the 33. So that's about two-thirds of the time that it took the 33 to do. So that's about 150% faster, at least according to my retarded calculations. And of course, since this is a PC-98, you might be wondering how it does on Toho. So I got Toho 5 up here, and luckily the ending of the game sort of has kind of a benchmark. It will show you how how much the uh, computer has slowed down during the course of play. And it's not completely 100% uh, repeatable, but it gives you the general idea of the performance of the computer. And also I could show you a couple spots where you can definitely tell there's lag and compare the 33 MHz CPU to the 66, so we'll do that. So now don't look at my score or my deaths or anything like that too closely because obviously I'm not very good at this video game. 
However, also, for whatever reason, the computer decided it wanted to play this song a little bit slower than usual, for unknown reasons. Maybe it wanted to drive, point, drive to the point that it, this is the slower CPU. So anyway, as you can see, the slowdown rating there is 33.17%, so I'm guessing that means that 33% of the game, the gameplay, was actually slowed down from full speed because the CPU could not keep up. So we can compare this to the 66 MHz version. And you'll see that the slowdown rating has just about dropped by half, which means that you'll get a smoother gameplay experience during the more busy parts of the video game, which I'll show you a couple of here in a bit. Also, I gotta say, it's pretty amusing to play a video game and then it tells me to kill myself, but, I mean, that's just kind of how this game goes. So you don't really see any slowdown in any real fashion until you hit the second boss here, and... As you can see right here, when it shoots the red lasers or the red bullets, it kind of slows down when the bullets are spawning, when they're kind of overlapping with each other. That seems to be kind of a, uh, a thing with these games, when the bullets overlap a lot, and it gets a little bit more slowed down than usual. Although, the gameplay is perfectly playable at 33 MHz. So now with the upgrade CPU, you should see it be a little bit smoother during the... Uh... Yeah, those. At this point, the difference isn't that big, but it's always the little things that make a difference. Another part where you get a little bit laggy is when the third boss spawns a lot of bullets at the same time. Like right there, there's a, quite a bit of a hitch from spawning all those red bullets. Now with the upgrade processor, you'll definitely notice that the hitch is a lot, uh, a lot less dramatic as she uh, spawns all the red bullets and other formations. The last comparison will be the final boss where she starts shooting the Worms of Doom and also that really big pattern that slows everything down to a crawl on the 33 MHz CPU. But as you can see, the Worms of Doom here do a pretty good job of slowing things down. Well, Fishes and Giggles, I'll throw this pattern in as well, since it does seem to slow things down pretty good on the 33 MHz CPU. And then, of course, there's this one, which uh, makes everything a little bit slow. You might not be able to tell until I play the 66 MHz version of this clip, but yeah, it's slowing down pretty hard. And so here are the Worms of Doom on the the upgrade processor, and you can see it's handling it pretty well. Everything is running pretty smooth. And it also handles the uh, swirly pattern of death here as well. And I also think that the frame rate speaks for itself in this section too. It doesn't really break a sweat. Here's another game you would want an overdrive processor or an upgrade processor for on these older uh, PC-98s. Because this, I think this game was uh, designed for faster machines, obviously, but I didn't really feel much of a difference when I swapped up to a 66 MHz CPU on this one. I'm not sure why. Although, it did give me a little taste of, oh, well, there's a 60 frames per second mode on this game, but... Um, it's dreadfully slow on the 33 megahertz CPU. I mean, you couldn't even get to like this past past this first part here without uh, you know crawling at like 20 frames a second for whatever reason. I don't know why when you turn it to 60 frames per second instead of just kind of running as fast as it can, it will just slow, go slower than when you have it on the 30 frames per second. But anyway, you can see it's sort of slowing down pretty heavy at the boss, and we get these purple glowing things. Also, when it grows arms and stuff, it's kind of chopping out. Well, looking at the footage now with the 66 MHz CPU, I can definitely see the uh, difference in the gameplay. I didn't really feel it, I'm not sure why. However, during the boss section, it definitely speeds up, especially with those purple glowing objects. But yeah, you can actually run parts of this game in the 60 frames per second mode, but I'm not going to show that. But, you know, you wouldn't want to run it like that constantly because about two-thirds or so through, through this level, it gets really, really bad when you're flying over that spaceship blowing up the cannons. But yeah, it runs a lot faster, I guess. I didn't really feel it, I don't know why, but looking at it now, it's definitely a lot faster.
Also, I wanted to get a s sort of feel for how it ran in the medium CPU speed setting. This is the 33 megahertz CPU running in medium speed. This is what I play Evo on because it, it keeps everything nice and slow and your character is controllable for most of the game, or if not all of the game. This computer actually does a very good job of keeping its CPU speeds very consistent because this is with the 66 megahertz CPU and about it runs about the same speed. And this game is pretty sensitive to CPU speed differences. As you can see, when we crank the 66 megahertz CPU up to the high speed, the highest it goes, your character is nearly uncontrollable, and even worse in the later games when you get to evolve more to the left side of the uh, the, the evolution chart. And this is the exact reason why people on YouTube complain about this game being slightly uncontrollable. It's because all their emulators, when they played the games, were running way too fast, and um, as a result, your character is completely uncontrollable. You go places you do not want to. So the best way to play this game, obviously, is to turn down your CPU speed to something comfortable. And for the sake of somewhat completion, I suppose, this is the uh, the benchmark with it set to low. And it's about, according to this program, 2.84 times the speed of the original PC-9801. So I'm not really knowledgeable enough to know why you'd want to use this mode, because um, if there is a game that you're playing that is very CPU spe uh, specific and requires uh, any CV30 at 10 megahertz, at, which is, uh, I think, the original 9801, I think? Or is that something else? Well, anyway, d the PC-98 didn't really get its distinct distinctive graphics until, like, the VM or VX models, so, uh... Yeah, I don't know. If you're gonna play a game like that, you probably wouldn't want to use this machine, because even the built-in CPU does not run as slow as the original. And before I determined that this test would be kind of a little bit pointless to do on this computer, I did notice something about this backwards compatibility mode. This is a port of the Spectrum Holobyte game event, which is a game where you race around in an open world type setting with a core event, which is kind of interesting for the time. It's all in 3D polygonal goodness. However, it does run a little bit funky on this computer, and I'm not really a big fan of the game itself, but it's kind of interesting in one way, besides its uh, horrendous audio. You'll notice sort of siren-like sounds going on right here, and this is when I'm holding down the 8 key to try and accelerate. This is because this low mode, for whatever reason, sometimes, only sometimes when I boot it up, will kind of buffer the keyboard input and then just puke it out on the screen all at the same time. You can definitely see it right here in the DOS prompt where I hold down the F key and it just kind of pukes things out on the screen kind of oddly, and that's what is making that noise in the game. It's kind of weird. So through my very limited testing and my limited knowledge of the platform, it doesn't really seem that there's too big of a reason to upgrade to 30 or 66 from 33. 33 seems to do everything pretty all right. However, this drive image that I have all my games for, all curated by the Pirate Gamer Boy 12 um, for this machine specifically. So maybe there's a whole bunch of programs that were from this era, era specifically, and there's later games that would. Uh, run better with the 66 megahertz CPU, and also there's also Windows, but I'm not really too interested in that right now, I'm just mainly talking about DOS stuff, but it seems that a lot of stuff would run pretty well on a 33 megahertz. Unless, of course, you are looking for that ultimate Toho experience on an AS2 machine.